welcome back to another vlog and my first of 2024 which i feel really excited about i feel hopeful for this year and that is my word for the year i know a lot of people do this but every single year i kind of think of a phrase or think of a word and i just felt like i wanted to go into this year feeling just really hopeful and looking at like the positives in my life and yeah i'm just i do feel hopeful about the year i am by no means springing back into action i leave all of that for spring january for me is very much still a slow month of the year and i mean i say that as if i've been doing it this way for years i haven't but last year i experimented with this idea of living more seasonally and almost seeing spring as my new year it works out so much better for me and i think for a lot of people as well it just doesn't align to give it your all in january when it is still raining outside the days are still dark it, we're in the depths of winter. We've literally had two weeks of winter. I mean, I'm filming this on the 2nd of January. We're in the thick of it. The mood outside is not matching the kind of new year, new me energy that we're told that we need to have. So I just kind of abandon that and rest more instead. And honestly, I just feel better in myself. I think because I'm coming into the new year knowing that I don't have to push really hard through what can be a difficult time of year anyway, it just takes the pressure off and I feel great for it. It's the 2nd of January and I'm like officially back at my desk today. I'm easing my way in slowly, but I've got work to do, so I'm cracking on. Um, it's actually 11 o'clock already. I've done a couple of bits this morning. Um, tonight is the first monthly journaling club of the year, so I'm hosting January's journaling club. So preparing a couple of bits for that. This vlog, I thought I would weave in elements of how I'm softly resetting for the new year. So nothing major, but little things like taking the decorations down, doing little bits of cleaning, a little bits of organising and just almost starting to think about how I want my year to look, not like acting anything out, but having like a subtle sense of direction, which just always makes me feel good and like I'm prepared and I'm ready and I'm here, um, but I'm not pushing too hard. So yeah, I thought I'd share that throughout the vlog today. We are those people that have not taken our Christmas decorations down yet, which I'm fine with. I'm happy to keep them up. I'm going to miss that tree and the lights in the living room massively. So I think throughout this week, we're going to gradually take little bits down and start to store it away. But we're going to keep the tree up till this weekend. Um, and to be honest, I would happily keep it up longer, but we haven't eaten, we haven't seen the living room um, while it's being fully decorated without a tree. So I'm also excited to see what that looks like. Anyway, I'm going to make a coffee. I did get a new mug. This is actually just from Sainsbury's because my other glass one broke and I just got really used to drinking out of a, I think it's like, they call it double walled glass mug. And now I really want my tea and coffee in one. So yeah, I picked this up from Sainsbury's in their sale. So I'm gonna make a cup of tea, come back up and crack on with a couple of other bits. My mum got me these decorations and we didn't have a star for our tree. This is the first year that we decorated. So I put this on top and these are probably the best paper decorations I've ever seen because you just pull up like this and then the whole thing flattens back down again. It could just be used till next year. I have no idea where she got them from for me, but we had this one on the top of the tree and then one from the window as well. And I think they look really cute and the fact that they are just so easy to store for next year makes me happy. So yeah, you just use that toggle, pull it down, and then we've got paper stars for next year as well.
it's just gone 12 and I was going to go for a walk but I mean I do want to go at some point today to get out of the house but equally it has just not stopped raining so I think I might wait and see if it passes if not I'm doing a rainy walk but I thought I would start to pack away some of the Christmas decorations I bought this because I basically just want them to be organised and in one place and actually we don't have that much stuff because it was our first year decorating this year and we just thought we'll collect things as the years go on rather than kind of splash out on loads of new things um, but this bag basically has loads of dividers in it so we'll be able to divide it up and I'm thinking all the bubbles underneath and then putting the lights on top and then everything can just be stored in here so I'm going to go through everything and yeah basically get it all organized we do have this box as well but it is just a disorganized mess i'm going to go through this as well and just get everything in a good place so when it comes to next year we know exactly where everything is and can just grab it out and it'll be easy to decorate I might put these little houses in here. I got these from Sostry and Gren. I've been collecting them over the years. And I think that they would be best in here. So I'm gonna put these in this box. I've got three of them. Um, two of them are lighted with tea lights. And then this little one, which if it will work, is a little light up house. So I'll pop that in there. I mean, with these, I actually do like them all year round. So I'm wondering. Actually, I'm thinking with one of these, I might keep it out. I might keep this one out and have it just as a normal decoration. All of this year's ribbon. I can use this again next year. I got these fans from Dunelm and if I'd have thought about it, I would have used blue tack to tie them together instead of the double-sided tape that it came with because it makes it a little bit more difficult to get them off, but actually, I think that that will be fine for next year and they go really small so they're easy, good, really good for storage because one thing that we thought about when we were buying decorations is the fact that our house is not the biggest. We don't have that much storage space and we just don't want loads of stuff around. Um, so this way, with decorating with things like this, they become just so easy to store for the next year. So I'm gonna go through all of these and just make sure that I can peel them off. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but it is probably the rainiest, darkest day I've ever had living here, and I've lived here for two years now. Obviously it's January, it's very typical, kind of like, it's quite dreary, dark, haven't seen a speck of sunlight. <laughs> um, it makes me feel really grateful actually to work from home, although I do get cabin fever. Like if this continues into tomorrow or the next day, I'm gonna have to do some sort of long walk and get out of it because it just doesn't do me any good staying in. My lunch was amazing. I'm gonna leave, well, if you like carrot soup, it was a nice carrot soup. I'll leave a link to the recipe in the description box. It is a slow cooker recipe, but I'm sure you could do it if you don't have a slow cooker. Although I'm sure loads of you do actually have a slow cooker because I'm just really late to the party. And it's one of those things that like we've got a really small kitchen, but actually that is worth the finding a space for it in our kitchen and making room for it because I mean, we're using it kind of like two or three times a week, making really good meals from it. Easier to make things from scratch, there's just so many benefits. And yeah, it made our carrot soup that we had for lunch today and then we've got leftovers for tomorrow as well. I thought I'd quickly share um, a little review of the book that I read in December. If you don't know, I've actually started a book club with a friend. It's gonna be in person in Nottingham. And the book for January, our first month, was Lessons in Chemistry. Annoyingly, for some reason, I thought, 
this book, which is the book I've just started. Um, and yeah, I think the copy that I have of it is in the office. But it's a really popular book. It's Lessons in Chemistry. I'll leave a link in the description box. There's also a TV series, which I haven't watched, but the book was amazing. I absolutely loved it. I wasn't as sure on the start of it, but I just felt like it kept growing on me and there's just so many things weaved into it that, yeah, I just thought it was a really good book. And then I've moved on to this, Milk Teeth. And I mean, I'm really not that far into it. I'm this many pages, how many pages that is, 65. But I'm enjoying it so far and looking forward to reading it. I'll share more about this once I've read it. And I will actually share the book club each month that we do for the in-person book club, just in case you do want some inspiration and to kind of follow along. If you join the monthly journaling club, this is a little bit of a behind the scenes. So I've got Zoom set up here, the journal prompts there, and my cup of tea and my journal here. Just come off the first monthly journaling club of 2024, went really well. Although I did feel really quite nervous for this one and I really had to remind myself during it to just be present, know that I don't have to be perfect and that just showing up of my, as myself is enough. And actually giving myself that little pep talk did help and kind of calm me down a little bit. I don't know why I felt nervous. I've been running them since July last year, July 2023. And for some reason, they just kind of crept in a little bit. And I think maybe it's because I had a bit of a break over Christmas. Um, and the fact that it's the first time running it through my slower space sub stack, I don't know. I don't know, but the nerves were there. And I thought I'd just be honest about it because I think sometimes like I will see people do webinars or webinars or online things or do these big things and think that they don't get nervous and just that you know they show up and that's not there um whereas actually for most of us it's part of part of it you know anyway i'm gonna shut my laptop off head downstairs make a cup of tea and honestly get into bed <laughs> because it has been quite a long dark day and i just feel like I need to get some sleep, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm just doing my morning skincare. Started off with this. Well, after cleansing my face, I use this. The Youth to the People Triple Peptide and Cactus Oasis Serum. And then I kind of switch up with my moisturisers, but I'm using this mini one from Ule Henriksen. This is their Strength Trainer Peptide Boost Moisturiser. I probably should have saved this for holidays or trips away, but it's just, it's probably the thickest moisturiser that I have. And my skin has taken a little bit of a battering with how cold it's been. So yeah, been using these two together and actually I feel like considering it's winter and it's cold outside, my skin's fared pretty well. <laughs> for my yoga practice and my yoga nidra. And now me and Jay are gonna go for a quick walk before I start work because it's not raining today, which I'm really pleased about actually because it was just so gloomy. I mean, it's still really dark, but yeah, it'd be nice to get some fresh air. And then I've got quite a busy day of work. I'm volunteering in the middle of the day. Switched up my morning routine a little bit and it's a really small change, but it's just working so much better for me because I used to wake up and get my decaf coffee and then I'd either kind of get back in bed or potter around. But instead of doing that, I'm waking up, having a shower, getting into comfortable clothes and doing the yoga straight away because I used to have my coffee first and then do some yoga. But actually, I'm just finding that everything that I do after my yoga practice, even if it's just a short meditation or doing my yoga nidra, feels like I'm more present for it. I'm more here for it. I feel better going into the day doing that. So it just makes more sense to do it as the first thing. And actually the yoga nidra practice works better while I'm still kind of in that just woken up state rather than kind of going downstairs, getting cold, making a cup of coffee or whatever. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that. I'm really enjoying it. I also, I really need to get a new face SPF. I know that I should be wearing SPF every day and I just haven't got around to doing it. So yeah, I'm gonna put this in here and leave it in here. Also, I'm trying to experiment with more hairstyles. So I have a bit of a braid in today. 
basically i have that hair type where no matter what i do i've tried to train it over the years it does just get oily at the roots the next day so yeah this is a kind of way to not have to wash my hair every day but also have a hairstyle that isn't just it all scraped back i mean it's kind of all scraped back but at least there's some interest at the back of my head anyway i'm rambling let's go for a morning walk i am not looking my best right now <laughs> just looked in the viewfinder and thought hmm um it's been an interesting day I say interesting, it's actually been quite boring. I've sat here for most of the day looking at so much data, so many spreadsheets, and I've still got a little bit left to do. I gave myself quite a few breaks. Obviously, I had my volunteering. Um, and obviously, one of the joys of being freelance is that you can work at any time. Jay is working into the evening tonight. He left at about two. So honestly, I'm kind of doing the same, which I don't usually do, but I just feel like today I really want to get this work done so I can have a bit of a clean slate tomorrow. So yeah, I've been doing that, listening to podcasts actually, um, which I haven't done in a while. I kind of just fell out of love of listening to them. I felt like I'd exhausted all of the ones that I'd listened to religiously like over the years. And honestly, I was just getting to the point where I was a little bit bored. Um, so if anyone does have any podcasts that they're really enjoying or any individual random episodes that are actually about like new and interesting things, I would love to know. Something that I have discovered actually is the Guardian Long Reads and one that I'm about to listen to on there is Dark Crystals, the brutal reality behind a booming wellness craze. Um, obviously given that I'm a yoga teacher and talk about wellness and wellbeing, I find it really interesting when people do this research into like the other side of it because obviously over the past few years has become something that sometimes isn't as helpful. So I'm going to listen to that. I did actually, I've just got back from the pharmacy because yesterday I had a couple of tests at the doctor's and I need to go on antibiotics, which is just lovely for the start of the year. Um, so I need to pop back there in an hour. And yeah, I'm just going to do some work in the meantime. I finished work and I'm making dinner for tonight, which is a kale and gnocchi bake. I just bought the gnocchi pre-made because it's a weekday night and not kiss a fat to make. It's probably gonna end up being the title of this vlog, to be honest, but I've realized this is the slowest start I have ever had to a new year. Like yeah, last year, I took it pretty slow. Jay wasn't here, he was actually working away. And this year, we have just found ourselves relishing in that in between Christmas and New Year phase into the new year like we've gone back to work but we're just taking it easy the tree is still up we still got lights on it which i know is controversial i have taken some of the decorations down i haven't put them away yet that is a job for this weekend but i'm just really enjoying allowing a little bit of christmas to still be here like we're obviously not watching christmas films and listening to Christmas music, like all of that for me finishes on Christmas day. The actual idea of romanticizing winter and bringing in some of the little rituals that I would do in December into January is something that I'm really leaning into this year. The old version of me would be like, no, I need to be really productive doing other things like work and have this kind of like new year, new me mentality. And now I'm just like, no, <laughs> I want a really soft, easy start and do kind of leaning more into the seasons last year really showed me not only does it feel nice to do it but you are you do naturally reap the rewards of it like i had so much more energy in spring and things ended up working out well so i'm sticking with it for now and i'm riding that wave like yes i'm still back in work but it's nice to just take it at a slower pace and not put so much pressure on myself to be this really productive person just because we've got a new year um like I have, I have marked it in different ways like through journaling and me and Jay did like a couple of things on New Year's Eve together but this year I'm really seeing spring as my new year um and probably some of the old things that I would have done kind of like around new year time I'll do when it's a little bit lighter and a little bit brighter and I've got more energy because I mean obviously I've not been well but on top of that, it is winter, it's dark, it's cold. I've been sharing quite a lot of it on Instagram and TikTok actually, and 
a lot of people are kind of saying that they're following the same thing this year so let me know in the comments how you're approaching new year in january um and whether you're kind of doing a similar thing and taking it a little bit slower or whether maybe for you it does feel good to set your intentions now and really start taking action on them this looks amazing i love that sound when you can hear it bubbling <laughs> there we go kale and gnocchi bake i actually did the washing up while it was baking which is really good for me because usually i just abandon it and then obviously you have to do it after dinner and usually I can't be bothered so it's going great. Every time I vlog in my dining room it reminds me that I really need to get some pictures on the wall or do something because there's just so much blank space. Anyway I'm gonna eat my dinner. I do just have a little taste. It's pretty good. One thing though I prefer gnocchi crispy so I don't know why I do this and obviously this is soft gnocchi. I wish that I'd pan fried the gnocchi and then put it in the bake. But flavour wise it's really nice. I'm going to eat this and then call it a night and probably check back into this vlog tomorrow morning. It's Thursday morning. Excuse my hair. I'm trying this method that I used to do where you basically kind of twist it back and then pin it back and it hopefully does a curl. I'm going to see how I get on. Um, but yeah, that's why my hair looks like this. The weather is, it's like my perfect winter day. I mean, it's probably everyone's perfect winter day, but it's clear blue skies. It's quite cold and crisp but just really good for a walk. So I am pushing it a little bit this morning. I've already done my yoga. It's half eight, but I mean, I say I'm pushing it. I, I've i been self-employed and doing my own thing for a year now, but there's still these things in my head that tell me that I should follow a nine to five schedule and I really need to get out of the habit of doing that. So yeah, gonna make the most of this weather. Jay's gonna come for a walk with me and um, yeah. I think it's going to be a good day. I'm also meeting my friend Molly and we're talking about the book club and planning that because that is a week today, our first ever in-person book club. So, I mean, our first ever book club. Anyway, I kind of said that as if we do it online. We don't do it online, but it's our first book club. I put on a little bit of makeup and thought I would show you my hair and just see how it's turned out. <laughs> I've had it in this. I basically washed it this morning, let it air dry for most of it and then just blasted it at the end. And then while it was warm, I put it back. So hopefully, I mean, my hair holds, it's naturally curly, but it can just be a little bit wild. That's not too bad. Mm. Maybe it is. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, it's got a bit of a wave. It, ow. It's got a bit of a wave instead of it being straight. This side has definitely done better in terms of the actual curl. This side, it's giving more like 80s hair. Um, oh, that's annoying, isn't it? Because this side looks quite cute. What I might do is put this side back in and make it a bit tighter because I think maybe that's the issue, it wasn't tight enough. So I'll quickly show you as well. All I do is take this front bit and just start twisting back and pick up sections of hair as I go. I used to do this loads and I was really good at not using heat on my hair and I just kind of go through phases with it. Actually, yeah, it definitely wasn't as tight as the other side. I don't know why I did that because obviously then it is gonna look different. Oh, have I just broke the clip? No, okay, we're good. I'll leave that in for another 10 minutes. I will happily wear this side of my hair like this. Right, I'm gonna go and get changed, head out for this walk and come back and crack on with it. Okay, I'm back in this spot, I'm dressed for the day. And I thought I'd do a second reveal of this side. And I think it has worked out better, actually. Yeah. I think they match a little bit better now. I am filming a video for a brand today. I'm working with BetterHelp, which is an online therapy platform. And I just create some videos for them. Um, so that's what I'm doing today, this morning. I'm also doing some of my yoga nidra coursework. I've got something to send in for that. And what else am I doing this morning? Obviously going to see meet my friend Molly for the book club. And if I can, I might try and film and fit in, filming a reel in there as well. So it's a really nice creative morning actually. I finished doing all of my filming for the campaign that I'm doing with BetterHelp. I think I mentioned it was with BetterHelp. BetterHelp? BetterHelp. Um, 
just basically creating videos for them that don't actually go out on my own social channels but they use as part of their own marketing and things um, so yeah I did that and I really enjoy doing that as part of my work it's a really nice element of it anyway I'm gonna do my yoga needle coursework I've just made a nice cup of tea it feels like a treat doing my yoga needle coursework because I just love it so much um, and basically with yoga nidra it's a form of meditation and you have to do well you don't have to do set things but it is kind of suggested that you follow a very set structure to allow the body to relax and allow the person that you're guiding with the yoga nidra to go deeper into the practice and a part of that is called rapid images and it's towards the end of the practice and you'll basically list things that the person can then create a visual in their mind of so things like birds tweeting or the beach things that people can visualize and move through quite quickly as part of the meditation so yeah i'm going to create my list of those send that off um and i thought it'd be nice, quite nice to like make it into a bit more of a mindful exercise the sun is amazing the morning walk was so nice just to get out i'm really glad that we did it Ah, oh, and yeah, all right, right, let me crack on. I've had a really lovely day today. It's just been a really good balance of things. Obviously, I went into town, met up with my friend Molly, who I'm doing the book club with, and we've just got into this little ritual of going to Waterstones and do in their cafe. Obviously, fitting, given the fact that we're doing a book club together. And also there isn't any independent bookshops in Nottingham, which is just wild. Um, but yeah, we finalised all the bits for the book club because it's actually this time next week that we will be running the first one. So yeah, in my head, we had more time and now I've actually realised, oh, it's next week. But we're all sorted and all ready for that. I thought to round this vlog off and actually sticking with the theme of books, I'd share some of the bits that I got for Christmas and just go through those because I like seeing what people get for Christmas and kind of gift ideas and things. We didn't really do gifts this year. Me and Jay bought each other, I guess kind of paid for ourselves essentially, to go for a nice meal. And it was a really nice meal um, at a restaurant in North Wales that we've been to a couple of times, but it's a real treat place. So we did that for each other for Christmas. Um, my mum got me a scarf. What else did she get me? Got me some edible bits like chocolates and things and Jay got me some lush bath bombs all of those have been used now but I'll leave a link to the ones that he did get me in the description box because they were really nice and actually it's really made me realize how much I do enjoy a lush bath so whenever I am in town now I mean I didn't do it today but maybe like once a month I'm going to go into lush and treat myself to a bath bomb because it was really nice and then the majority of things I got were books um my brother got me and Jay an experience. We've got a voucher for a restaurant in London. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I've, we've got quite a close knit family and between us, we just sort of said we we're gonna do things a little bit more low key this year. And yeah, it was really nice. But I did get some books. So anyway, the first one is this, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. And I can't remember, I mean, I've just seen this everywhere. And a lot of people's recommendations that I usually like and really get on with were recommending this. So. I'm really looking forward to reading that one. This next one actually was gifted in a sense, I guess, but it wasn't from a family member or as a Christmas present, it's just a sample copy. And it's from Jenny O'Dell, Saving Time, Discovering a Life Beyond the Clock. On the back it says, our life is dominated by the corporate clock that so many of us contort ourselves to fit inside. It wasn't devised for people, but for profit. We need to embrace a whole new concept of time, one that gives us and our planet a brighter future. So really in line with the kind of things that I speak about and I'm passionate about. I'm actually really looking forward to reading this. Again, it seems like it's quite data heavy. There's a lot going on in there. Um, so I think it might be one that I pick up more in February, maybe even March, depending on the book club pick for next month. But yeah, really looking forward to reading this. And I think it's going to be a, a really interesting deep dive into kind of capitalism and systems and all that sort of good stuff. So looking forward to reading that. If you've just noticed the camera change, I've just had to change my memory card. Anyway, next book is from Elizabeth Gilbert, Big Magic. And my mum bought me this. And 
this has been a popular book. It's not a new release. I think it was maybe 2010 that this was first released. Was it 2010? Oh no, 2015. But I actually discovered Elizabeth Gilbert on Substack more than I did through her books and other work which she's more well known for. And I just absolutely love her Substack and I was like, why have I not read Big Magic before? And I think she's got another book, Eat, Pray, Love. Um, that I just have never read and I feel like they're gonna be right up my street. This book it says at the bottom, creative living beyond fear. Readers of all ages and from all walks of life have drawn inspiration from Elizabeth Gilbert's books for years. Now this beloved author digs deep into her own generati generati <laughs> generative process to share her wisdom and unique perspective on creativity. And this year I do just really wanna focus more on being creative both online with the work I do on my substack, but also just outside of anything else that's deemed to be productive. And I think that this book is really gonna help me alongside, lovely little segue there, this one, which has been spoken about so much on TikTok. And I feel like that has probably influenced me with this, but it's The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And this is where the idea of morning pages comes from. I'd heard about morning pages, didn't know the origins. I think it's from this book. And again, similar to Big Magic, it really focuses on creativity and it does actually have a quote from Elizabeth Gilbert on the back of this. Three times in the last decade, I've committed to doing the Artist's Way programme and each time I've learned something important and surprising about myself and my work. So I'm really looking forward to doing this. And again, with this book, I think that I'm gonna save some of it for kind of February, March, as we're coming more into spring, because I feel like I'm just gonna have more energy to really dig into it and yeah, start doing more of it. I feel like it's, there's more of like a program and a step-by-step -step thing with this book from what I can tell anyway, and what I've researched about it. But yeah, again, this is meant to be a really lovely book for inspiring creativity. So I'm really looking forward to digging into that one. So I've got a lot of reading that I can be getting on with. I did also buy a couple of books before Christmas. I'm currently reading Milk Teeth, which I'm really enjoying. And then also, what's the other book that I'm reading? I'll put the name on the screen, I can't remember now, but I'll leave all of the book links below. It's half five. I'm gonna go and wrap up my work for the day, put in my dinner and just have a really chilled evening. So I'm gonna sign this vlog off here. Thank you for joining me for the first week back in January. I hope that you have had a really nice new year or start to the new year and I will see you in the next video.